Um, hi. So um, I recently found this nice little survey in my Twitter timeline. And it basically uh, describes the core of the problem we wanted to try to uh, solve in this paper. And it says, um, I'm a programmer looking for a solution on Stack Overflow to paste into my project. And it has thousands of retweets and 10,000s of likes, so it seems that you could consider this as common behavior. And we also had a lot of uh, studies over the last years that basically uh, looked at this a little bit more scientifically, and they confirmed this. So uh, as this might speak for the high usability and utility of Stack Overflow, uh, it also comes with a high risk for application security. And um, that is when it comes to security-related questions or usability issues around cryptographic APIs. So um, for instance, this Stack Overflow question is about one of the biggest issues in Android. Uh, how can you accept a certificate during TLS handshake that is not part of the custom Android Trust store? So in this, this question uh, showed up on the Stack Overflow quite a lot, uh, had millions of view counts and, and, and a lot of uh, upvotes and so on. Um, and a typical, typical question to this answer was uh, this null verifier or some kind of variation of it um, which basically turns off certificate verification. Um, however, it technically solved the initial problem, so people were quite happy with this answer, and it was you know, ups, upvoted a lot. Um, so two years ago, we had an Oakland paper where we basically have shown that people indeed reuse insecure code from Stack Overflow in Android applications from Google Play. Um, and those included apps with uh, high-profile apps with billions of downloads uh, and apps from security-sensitive categories. And uh, one of our co-authors had another paper where they basically were able to show that it's possible to attack apps uh, based on these insecure code snippets from Stack Overflow um, to steal credentials and credit card numbers and other private, private data. So we had uh, another ICSE paper this year which basically showed that all the market signals on Stack Overflow basically point towards the wrong direction as they you know, hand insecure solutions on a plate, basically. So it seems that it's quite a problem, so what to do about it? Um, so over the last years, we had a lot of really nice studies that basically investigated different forms of security advice for software developers and compared it with Stack Overflow. So for instance, books and formal documentation, uh, static code analysis tools, uh, and also simplified cryptographic APIs. So as all of these approaches uh, helped in you know, producing more secure solutions, um, they produced less functional solutions uh, due to some usability issue. And um, the interesting thing for us was that, um, in, from these studies, was that whenever people you know, encountered a usability issue with one of these approaches, uh, they went for you know, code shopping on Stack Overflow once again. And you know, this behavior kind of goes in line with a quote of Richard Thaler, who's the founder of the nudge theory. And it says, first, never underestimate the power of inertia, but also, second, that power can be harnessed. And uh, for us, that, that sounds, sounded quite nice. So uh, it inspired us um, for our main approach, which was, you know, maybe it's possible to kind of uh, exploit this copy and paste behavior and also the uh, apparently unbeatable usability of Stack Overflow to, you know, help people getting security right. But how to do that? So one of the most uh, important findings to answer this question uh, findings in our paper to uh, answer this question was that we found out that on Stack Overflow, um, for a uh, for, uh, we had Stack Overflow provide similar and secure code snippets um, for almost all of the, the insecure code snippets. So you might uh, be able to look at this, um, you, might be, you might look at this at a, as a um, you know, decision-making problem, uh, and that's, um, 
uh, uh, um, and that's when uh, you know the such uh, the Nudge theory comes into play. And uh, so the Nudge theory basically tries to nudge people towards better decisions without restricting their options. Um, and here on the right side, you can see an example for this. There are two options, you know, for getting upstairs. Uh, using the stairs is the better option in terms of health, but people, you know, tend to use the escalator. However, if you come up with a new choice architecture with the stairs now look like a piano keyboard uh, that makes sounds when you walk upstairs, uh, people, you know, start to favor this option. Um, so our first goal was to come up with a new choice architecture for Stack Overflow uh, that nudges people um, from, you know, from, yeah, that nudges people towards reusing code examples uh, that provides stronger security without, you know, um, without interfering with the usability of Stack Overflow. So and to be able to do that, the first thing we had to do uh, was to find these better alternatives on Stack Overflow. So we basically had to solve three technical problems, and that was uh, being able to predict uh, the similarity of uh, cryptographic API patterns, predicting their use case, and, uh, and of course, their security. So in our first step, uh, we learned a representation of cryptographic API patterns by embedding their code graphs uh, into a vector space using structured vec. So um, the, so the um, uh, embedding is learned such that uh, similar patterns are closer together uh, and dissimilar patterns are more far away from each other in the embedding space. And additionally, we had to solve a problem that was kind of specific for Stack Overflow, and that was, um, you know, a lot of code examples on Stack Overflow uh, are incomplete programs, so they won't compile. So we had to use a fuzzy compiler to get some kind of graph representation out of it, which might be unsound. Um, so however, our embedding approach takes this into account and uh, moves these different graph representation for the same pattern also closer together in the embedding space. All right, so the second problem we needed to solve was to predict use cases of patterns. Um, so since we already had a pre-trained pre similarity model uh, that already contained useful knowledge to predict a use case, uh, we transferred this knowledge from the knowledge from the similarity domain into the use case domain. So we basically added a couple of layers on top of our representation learning network and a multi-class classification layer to predict the use cases. And uh, we did the same thing for predicting security. We applied transfer learning from, uh, tra to transfer the knowledge from the similarity domain into the security domain this time using a binary classifier. So here on the left side, you can see the results of our similarity model uh, for basically all the um, cryptographic API patterns we extracted from Stack Overflow. Um, and here the color basically indicates their use cases. And as you can see, the similarity model already creates some, some dense clusters for some use cases, but also sparse clusters for others. And on the right side, you can see the results of our use case model, which kind of corrects this and uh, creates by creating dense clusters for all of these use cases. <clears throat> and here in the middle, you can see the results of our sim similarity model again. Uh, however, this time, uh, the color indicates the security of the pattern. And this cluster here is um, a cipher cluster, so the use case of the patterns here are, you know, initializing a cipher. And this cluster kind of gives, um, you know, nicely indicates that our main idea of nudging people from, you know, insecure to secure might actually be technically feasible. Um, so this, as you can see, the similarity cluster has a security boundary, so samples that are close to this boundary might actually provide very useful alternatives. And so we cherry-picked an example for this. Um, so on the left side, you can see the security warning for an insecure pattern, as we showed it on Stack Overflow. Uh, in the bottom, you can see the list of recommendations, and they're ordered by similarity and use cases. 
So when you click on the first link, you would end up on a Stack Overflow post shown on the right. And as you can see, the, 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 the code is basically the same. Uh, it only differs in, in the statement that rendered the whole code snippet insecure before. However, uh, the user or the developer might actually ignore basically everything I just showed and, you know, a copied code copy would copy the insecure code again. And so whenever we, uh, we kind of, you know, see that, we trigger a reminder nudge that basically shows the security warning and the recommendations again to nudge the, you know, the, the user one more time. <clears throat> So as we now had everything together, uh, we wanted to test our system design within a small developer study. And we had two treatments, uh, one nudge, uh, the nudge group and the control group. And, and both of them had to solve two, two different, different programming tasks, symmetric encryption and certificate verification. And we had two metrics, functional correctness and security. So once again, functional correctness for us was very important because we wanted to make sure that we didn't create any obstacles for programmers such that they, you know, um, can happily continue copy and paste stuff. So, and yes, we achieved our first goal for functional correctness. So both groups um, achieved a very high level of functional, the solutions of both group, groups uh, achieved a very high le level of functional correctness. And the nudge group had no uh, significant negative effect on functional correctness. And we also achieved our security goal um, as the nudge group significantly outperformed the control group when it comes to, you know, uh, uh, um, with respect to the solutions. All right, so and now I'd like to discuss a little bit, you know, what worked. And to be able to do that, we looked at the copy and paste history of all of, of the nudge participants. And that includes the, um, what, copy, uh, what uh, code has been copied from Stack Overflow into the clipboard and uh, what code has been pasted from the clipboard into uh, the IDE of our participants. So first we wanted to have a look at how uh, security warnings work on Stack Overflow. And yes, we had 27% insecure copies from Stack Overflow to the clipboard. So once again, um, you, know, stick, you know, security warnings are not enough, nothing new. Um, however, we had 0% uh, insecure pastes into the IDE. So every, each and every um, paste from Stack Overflow into the IDE was secure. So we concluded that um, people dropped the insecure copy due to the reminder nudge and reused a rec one of our recommendations instead. So to, to wrap up the talk, uh, I'd like to present one of our, one of the nice, our nice results, I think, which was that uh, it helped um, tackling null, these nasty null verifiers a little bit. So, a uh, short reminder, um, in our Oakland paper, we basically showed that 90% of code that was reused uh, from Stack Overflow in Android applications uh, were null verifiers, and 0.2% um, was, uh, only 0.2% was code that got a certificate verification right. So our nudge group here achieved 77% secure solutions, while still the control uh, stayed quite, be, quite behind here. And um, I think this is quite a cool result because we consider this problem um, as the one with the highest risk for application security as, as, as shown by Fall et al. And at that, uh, this was also the use case um, where we found you know, the, less no, uh, the, the lowest number of secure uh, solutions on Stack Overflow. We kind of we have found, I think, over 1,000 examples for a null verifier and only like 50 to 60 examples that did, did it right. However, uh, there are still you know, lots of questions and open problems. Um, one in interesting problem is, uh, or question is the default notch 
which is a very, very uh, popular notch in the literature. It basically um, you know, presents the, the better option per default. And we implemented this in, on, in Stack Overflow by basically reordering search results based on security, such that people would see you know, the better option first. And um, it'd be nice to see uh, um, a large scale study um, on live Stack Overflow with real Stack Overflow users um, to test you know, several different U UI and different text to come up with a final design. Um, so the great thing is that Stack Overflow offers a partnership program with academia, so that might be uh, an opportunity to actually have impact. All right, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the great talk. So you might think that I'm overthinking, but uh, consider that I'm an attacker who wants to sp spread my buggy code for yep. malicious purposes. So before these nudges, I need to convince people that my code is good. But after these nudges, I just need to convince your model that my code is good so yep. that it would recommend people. Yep. Have you evaluated like which one is easier? Have you evaluated that an attacker who might put your model as the target? Yep. Um, so, of course, an adversarial attack here is an, an interesting question. And uh, the thing that the code on Stack Overflow is, is fuzzy, um, uh, I think, makes an adversarial, adversarial attack uh, a little bit easier. So the code doesn't have to compile. So you could add, you know, randomly try to add, you, if you want to add noise, you would try to randomly add a character somewhere in the code. Uh, and, and try to um, you know, somehow change its graph representation such that the embedding is changed and the model uh, would, make a wrong, uh, uh, you know, would change its prediction from, uh, from insecure to secure. However, uh, on Stack Overflow, you would have to do a lot of things to actually be able to be allowed to change code on Stack Overflow. I mean, you would have to do the query and to do uh, against the model, and to be able to do that, you would have to change the code on Stack Overflow. And then to be able to do that, you would have to do a lot of things to get the permission to do that. And when you change the code, um, the code is shown to uh, different monitors on Stack Overflow, uh, similar to you know re reviewing code, and they would have to agree, um, you know, that this change makes sense because Stack Overflow has a lot of problems with people, you know, just randomly uh, change different things to copy stuff, you know, to create duplicates to increase their score. So there are people that are looking at this stuff. However, if you think, this, uh, if you think of this as a general approach, you would also like to use on, on, on uh, GitHub or something, something else. Of course, positive indicators for security uh, are, are, you know, could be a problem. Um, very interesting work. I'm wondering how you label those cryptographic code as secure or insecure from Stack Overflow. Um, yeah, we we basically uh, reused um, the labeling rules from our previous paper, so we um, so we, we we did this manually. So we d basically l looked at all these ten, you know, I don't know many samples. It was, I think, 10, 16,000 samples. Uh, we looked at them, and uh, we had different um, you know, security experts. And they looked at it and decided whether it's secure or not, if this answers the question. Great. Let's thank Felix. Thank you very much. <laughs>